Hey there, and welcome back. Um, so now we have a um, an understanding of pretty much every single parameter in the software. Now it's time to start learning how to design um, different sounds from start to finish. So we've we've walked through all the different pieces of Massive, and now it's time to put all that information together and to walk step by step through the um, process of designing sounds. So in this lecture, we're going to start off by building a classic um, analog style bass sound. And um, so the first thing that we're going to do is to um, set up some of the global parameters um, that are appropriate for this sound. So since we're talking about a bass sound, we are most likely going to want it to be monophonic. So we're going to go to the voicing tab in the center window the voicing general page. We're going to set our um, voicing to mono rotate so that we're playing one note at a time. Now I don't really want that glide sound so I'm going to move over to the oscillator and I'm going to turn down the glide time. And let's go back to our voicing page. Now I want um, sort of that analog warmth so I'm going to turn up my unisono to 2 and I'm going to create a little bit of unisono spread. So I'm going to turn the pitch cutoff to on. And I'm going to turn this fader up just a tiny, tiny bit. And that'll give me that nice, um, slow, swelling kind of um, uh, pitch modulation there. Which sounds pretty cool. And uh, so the next step is to just make sure that our oscillators are set up correctly. So I'm going to use three oscillators for this sound. Oscillator one is going to stay in the sawtooth position. So here, this is the default. And we're, we're all good with that. So we're going to keep it on sawtooth. Oscillator two, we're going to set up as a sine wave. So you can choose either sine square or sine triangle and bring your wavetable position all the way to the left like that. We're also going to drop this down in pitch one octave, which will sound like this. OK, that's a nice pure sine wave. And then we're going to activate oscillator three, and we're going to throw in a little bit of a distorted signal. So um, you can choose one of these that you like, maybe in the analog electric column. And uh, for this one, let's choose the classic uh, wave table and we're going to leave it on full right and this one sounds like this okay that's kind of got a cool buzzy kind of distorted sound we're also going to drop this down one octave uh, because we're, we're making a bass sound now in order to uh, create a little spread between these two I'm going to change the pitch just by a few cents maybe five cents I'm going to drag that down and then in oscillator two, I'm going to drag these up just a couple, um, just to create a little bit of spread between those two pitches. And we'll keep oscillator one set with the pure tone like that. Now I'm going to send oscillators one and oscillator three up to filter one. Okay, so if it's by, if it's by default in the middle, you're going to want to slide this fader up. Um, to, in order to send them to filter one, like that. Oscillator two, we're going to send to filter two. Okay. The, this um, series and parallel fader, we want to stay in parallel. And then um, we need to raise this output fader on filter two up to the top so that we have some signal coming out when the signal passes through here. Then I'm going to set up my filter mix right in the middle just like that okay so let's set up um, f our filters and then we'll move on to the modulation oscillator so since we're using a bass sound what we have right now is a little too full so we're gonna set up a low pass filter and if you remember the low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass through so you can hear that when the cutoff is down far, it's pretty low. 
And then as you bring up the cutoff, you can hear some of those higher frequencies coming through. I don't like that much resonance, so I'm going to turn this resonance dot knob down. And now I'm going to use the modulation source of an envelope to control this knob over time. So I'm going to drag, I'm going to click and assign envelope number one to my cutoff frequency. And I'm going to drag this range down. So what I want is for the sound to um, begin at this cutoff frequency and then fade out to a to this cutoff frequency okay so I need to design that in my envelope and what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna raise the key tracking fader so that this envelope follows the key of the MIDI of the incoming MIDI information and now I'm gonna build an envelope uh, that is shaped sort of like a, a rising and slowly falling um, tabletop so I'm gonna turn the attack up quite a bit like this and I'm gonna turn the decay level the sustain level up I'm gonna shorten the decay time and probably increase the release time like this so let's hear how that sounds so you can hear how it's it almost sounds like it's uh, when I strike the key the cutoff frequency is here and then it sort of slowly fades down to there. Now we're getting a little bit more of that um, analog bass kind of sound. So let's move down to this modulation oscillator. So we're going to assign just a couple of these um, modulators into this matrix just to give a little bit more character to the sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is raise the pitch of the modulation oscillator up to 12 so that we have some differentiation. And let's try assigning the um, position modulator to oscillator 3. And I'm going to deactivate oscillators 1 and 2 just so we can get a better uh, view of what's happening. So you can hear how the wavetable position is starting to move there. If you want some more extreme sounds, you can change the pitch here. But I like to hear it, 12 semitones. So we might want to set this phase modulation to oscillator 2. Just to bring in a few of those overtones so it's not too pure of a signal. Just like that. Okay, so I like how that sounds already, and now let's put all three together. Okay, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well, but we've got a little bit more work to do. Let's head over to the uh, routing page, and let's talk about adding in some feedback. So I'm going to activate my feedback section down here, and I'm going to raise this up to where, probably about right here, to, to where this line is pointing at the F. Okay, now I need to figure out where in my signal chain I want that feedback to occur. I'm thinking maybe after um, this filter one.
So that gives me a little bit more of uh, that sort of saturated warmth sound, and I like that. And now I'm going to set up um, a couple master effects just to see if I want to sort of play with them. Um, the first one I'm going to set up is one of these tube effects. You can use the classic tube is a little bit heavier of a distortion. Bronner tube is is um, a little bit uh, pitchier. The Bronner tube has a higher pitch sound. I like the classic tube, so we'll stick with that. And I'm going to turn the drive down significantly. I just want a little bit in there. Now I'm also going to set up a dimension expander to make this this bass tone just a little bit wider and bigger. We need to turn down our master output because we're starting to clip here. And you can adjust that to your taste. You can have it full wet and a full size. But to me that loses a lot of the punchiness. So when the size is up so high, it sort of acts like a little bit of a delay. You can hear that echo. But I want it to be smaller. Now let's move on to um, the fourth envelope here, which is uh, by default set to the amplitude section. And I just want to adjust a few of these default parameters to give me a more sustained um, envelope. So I'm going to reduce the attack time just a little, just like that, all the way down to nothing. And I'm also going to reduce the release time. And then hopefully you're. Uh, push that sustain level up to the top if it's not up there already. I just bumped up the feedback amplitude just a little bit. And we can even increase some of the drive here on our tube effect. If you like that. So, um, that is a basic analog, classic analog bass sound. Now let's also um, remember that we can set up some macro controls to adjust these. So why don't we set up um, macro control 2 to this filter cutoff, like this. And this way you can increase that cutoff where that cutoff frequency starts. I'm going to turn this feedback down. So you can hear as I increase that number two, then I can change where that cutoff frequency begins. And that's pretty cool. I can also set up um, macro controls three and four into these um, effects sections. So I'll put three here. And we'll just create a little bit more range of the tube's um, dry wet parameter, as well as the drive, just like that. So now when I increase number three on the macro control, it will give me a little bit wetter of a signal and a little bit more drive. <laughs> Just like that. And you can find your sweet spot there. Same thing with the dimension expander. We can set number four to this parameter and the size parameter. So you can make changes like that over time. Um, you can also feel free if you feel like you want this um, 
to have a little bit more movement, you can try throwing an LFO on the resonance knob. Let's increase that knob a little bit and then create a nice uh, sort of small range on the resonance knob like this. Change that crossfade curve to full sine wave and then we'll get a nice sort of fluid movement of this resonance knob on the filter. like that. You can also try setting an LFO to uh, the wavetable position of oscillator 1. Just like that so that you have a little bit of movement there. Okay, so that is your classic analog bass sound uh, with some different options for you to uh, try playing with and adjusting it to um, what you think sounds best. And I also encourage you to locate the preset files in uh, the course uh, supplemental files and you can pull up the presets that I've built here and then you can play with them that way. So. Um, Try uh, try messing with some of those parameters and move on. Let's move on to the next lecture.